and data. It's not really semantic web per se. Uh, it's basically because they do argue about whether it's a rebranding of semantic web or not. But the idea is what they say, this is straight from their website, it's recommended best practice for exposing, sharing, connecting pieces of data, information, knowledge, and URIs. Basically putting our files or ontology files up and connecting them. That was one of the things that was probably missing from the initial semantic web. You build your ontology, build your data, and you don't link. Uh, you know, you could link through this owl imports that we, put, that we won't talk about it, but, but this general linking of data, this is one of the first uh, approach, and it's becoming very successful. And as you can see, there are, we have large amount of facts and a lot of links. We have you know, a million links. Uh, so that's, that's something uh, good to look at. Um, you know, semantic web is not, you know, when we need a search, uh, when we need to go look for some information, we don't go to semantic web. So there are obviously challenges. Uh, and some of the challenges are just with web. Uh, you have inherent autonomy of the web. It's very hard to agree on things. And human processable web can deal with that. Uh, machine processable web may have trouble. So, you know, uh, we have, you know, whether classification, whether it's crimson is a subclass of red or whatnot. But very hard for people to agree on things. And ontology is an unambiguous, uh, generally accepted domain description. So you, you would have a harder time doing that. Uh, as, we, as I said, uh, DL stands for description logics, and uh, description logic reasoning, the one that would give us these implied facts, uh, uh, is very expensive, and it's very difficult for large semantic web data. So scalability is one of the issues uh, that we have to deal with. Uh, and, and the data is very dynamic. Uh, is the crawl fast enough for all domains? I mean, clearly, Google crawl is good, uh, and, you know, Crawl-based approaches, you know, if you have very, very good crawling approaches, uh, it is fairly fast. But when you are handing everything out to machines, uh, maybe some domains would require uh, more uh, fresh data. And we'll, 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 I'll, I'll talk about sources that are not atomic, uh, but my work uh, works on atomic data sources. And basically, atomic data sources mean small album files that can be loaded into a reasoner in its entirety, as opposed to deep semantic web, for example. OK, so the realm statements. As I mentioned, uh, the realm statements uh, are a way to summarize uh, a data source, a semantic web data source, so that we can somehow match it with the query uh, and find it relevant. So it's a, it's a metadata scheme. And we have three. Uh, forms of relevance metadata. Uh, and the reason behind that is there are these three types of data that are available in a semantic web uh, data sources. So the semantic web is a, uh, about classes and properties uh, based on description logic. And uh, so we want to have the source to be able to say that I have some information on this class or I have some information about this property. Uh, the OWL same as assertion uh, is this data mapping that I uh, mentioned early on. And do you have it like a prologue or data log query, which is what that your Yes, yes, this is a data log prologue syntax, and it's essentially the same, same way, yes. conjunctive queries, yes. OK. Uh, so PDMS ad adaptation, uh, that was uh, the first source selection algorithm. Uh, and I want to bring in this idea because PDMS is peer data management systems, uh, and it's an information integration uh, work. And sort of want to uh, contrast that with the source selection because basically what we did was we adapted uh, a PDMS system, uh, a, a, an information integration system, to the source selection domain. Uh, so data sources in information integration, it's queryable. Uh, you query the data source. Uh, the source selection uh, in data sources are lightweight, the atomic data sources that we talked about. Uh, the reformulation process is essentially similar. 
uh, match and expand uh, of the rules with query items. So the data log, as Professor Hidman pointed out, uh, the data log prolog style, uh, match and expand, match and expand. Uh, the result is what we make is different. Uh, in an information integration, once we do the uh, expansion and, and uh, reformulation, we basically get a bunch of reformulated queries that we issue. Some gap rules that you could write as a lab, I guess, uh, if it's a single conjunct. Uh, that would probably work, but multiple conjunct you couldn't because uh, this one says big monitor X is L uh, this, the example is not very good because I repeated the example. Uh, let me go to the next slide and uh, when I show the example uh, in the algorithm and if it's not here we can come back to it because yeah, this is. Uh, so. For this adaptation, we identify inferences uh, within a domain ontology. Uh, the first adaptation actually uses very small, uh, a simpler ontology than the second algorithm would, uh, because we basically do subclasses and subproperties on that one. And to do that, we basically uh, get all the subclasses of a given node uh, using a, another reasoner, and and we uh, we we explore that. Uh, expand that, uh, and then we use a variation of standard unification. But this has some ramification because we actually eventually have a fewer. Uh, we were less expressive. We, we could handle less expressive languages. Uh, so to do this adaptation, we also needed to identify a subset that is compatible with them and gap an out subset. Uh, I'm going to jump. To this, this is the language. I'm not going to talk about the language much because I think Professor Munoz has a good question about this, uh, how, how this matches work and can we rewrite and so on. So I'm just going to jump into the algorithm now. Uh, so this might actually clarify some of the thing. Uh, so we have that same query, green transport made by XGMC, and this is the source selection algorithm uh, flow, I guess. Uh, we have a bunch of rules, and as you see, there are gaps and labs. And uh, so what this source selection algorithm does is it creates uh, an and or graph. So this is a standard.